here and now with Ahmed of Palestine and myself, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld uh, in Montreal, Quebec. And uh, now we're being faced with uh, very great challenges and uh, yet the resistance continues and can never be stopped. This is a terrible time at this moment and it uh, makes me uh, pessimistic in a historical sense because I remember the Spanish Civil War in which, you know, everybody in the world was sympathetic to the Spanish Republic, you know, that was uh, properly elected and all that, you know, and they were against, you know, military putsch, but they won anyway. Why? Because they were, the monarchists, you know, were being supported, you know, by the Nazi Germany, feeding them with all the equipment and bombs that they needed. And the uh, revolutionary side was not being, you know, helped at all, you know, by the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. And they lost. Now I see, you know, Hezbollah and Hamas, you know, fighting on their own with having very limited supplies, you know, they're mostly very autonomous, you know, in terms of their own development and sustenance. So I'm worried, you know, that fascism could win again, you know, like I have this trauma in my own family history, you know, and uh, it makes me think that this can happen again, because it happened once already. It is hard times. Uh, I'm not saying uh, that's lightly. It is hard times, but um, I don't think uh, that uh, the Zionists uh, will win uh, this time around with uh, the resistance in Lebanon led by Hezbollah. Uh, yes, uh, the leadership of Hezbollah got hit hard by the Zionists. Uh, they literally eliminate, eliminated most of the political and um, military leadership uh, without going in, in, in details how and when, why all these things. This is uh, not important at this point. We're talking about uh, what is Hezbollah is doing at this moment. I think Hezbollah is now regrouping, at least from the leadership point of view, because the body of the the, the fighters has not been touched, as the Zionists said, as uh, massively as they said they hit hard, about 50% of arsenals and, and uh, personnel. So to me now, I think Hezbollah is regrouping, uh, the uh, you know uh, making a new decision need new leadership and uh, it's restarting all over again um, basically uh, they're waiting for the Zionists to enter into a land invasion where Hezbollah uh, personnel military personnel has not been really touched so basically it, we are uh, awaiting big surprises uh, on the battlefield. Um, all uh, military analysts for the past 10, year, 10 months saying that if Israel goes into uh, invasion, they might lose the way they'd lost in, 19, in 2006. So it's not as, uh, as bleak as it might look. Uh, in the south, in Palestine, and in, in Gaza, Strip, the resistance after one year still hitting hard the Zionist, uh, you know, uh, tanks and uh, bulldozers and personal carriers. And uh, yes, it's uh, very hard on the population, but uh, the <clears throat> the Freedom Fighters uh, organization or personnel still uh, strong and still hitting back. So, uh, uh it is is not as as simple as we might think, but it is difficult. But uh, the the resistance will triumph. Uh, uh, Hezbollah is not alone. Uh, there's other Lebanese resistance groups. Uh, there's also Iraqi and um, other volunteers uh, are stationed in Syria. So. Uh, and Iran might uh, enter the, the fray in, in a big way. So um, it's not uh, a picnic in the, in the park, as we say, but it is what it is. It's got to be um, the ma a major war 
that will uh, reshape uh, the Middle East as uh, criminal Argentinian is uh, we changing the the Middle East. So and we think yeah. The Middle East has to be changed, but not in his way. It should be the the uh, masses way. Hmm. So that's what I think. Hmm. Um, I saw the uh, I heard the speech from uh, Edrogen uh, of Turkey in the United Nations. Very militant, you know, calling for coercion, coercion to be used to force Israel to comply with UN resolutions. So he used the word coercion. Didn't define what that meant, you know. But no, I, 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 I've always uh, said and stand by my words for the past uh, twelve months, or almost twelve months. Turkey is playing games, okay. It's playing games with Russia, playing games with the United States, playing games with us, and playing games with the Zionists. They're just being opportunists. Uh, he says. Uh, something uh, to the fact that how bad the Zionists are and Netanyahu is a bad and he's like little Hitler and we have to to have a coalition with him meantime or meanwhile the other Bajan uh, oil and gas still flowing freely through the <laughs> Turkish uh, uh, port of Jihan uh, many goods and uh, are being still uh, uh, going sailing from Turkey to the Zionist state. Uh, lately, uh, it, this news that uh, the United States agreed to let in again in Turkey into the F-35 uh, program and uh, asking them to return the S-400 back to Russia. So uh, yeah. Erdogan, Erdogan is uh, because he has, the Turkish people have some, uh, you know, margin of freedom to say what they want. And, and therefore, he has to say something to the people in Turkey who are all in general for the Palestinian rights. So he has to, you know, give uh, lip service to the, the people in Turkey. But indeed, he's, his position uh, with the American uh, camp, the, the fascist. Cam, uh, I don't trust this man. Yeah, uh, uh, lately he's been trying to play it in both sides. You know, they've applied to uh, become a member of BRICS as well as being a member Never. of the European. Uh, what are they? A member of the European Union or the? No, no, NATO? they're not. They're not allowed. They're not. No, allowed. they're not. Oh, that's right. They're not allowed. You know, because, because they're not they're Christians. Muslims, as simple as that. Cyprus, <laughs> Cyprus. It's it's part of it. It's uh, Malta is part of the European Union because of Christians, but because it's a Muslim country, and despite they have part of Turkey in Europe, they are not allowed into the European Union. Is they've been trying for the past what fifty years, uh, you know? Yeah, uh, trying yeah. to be part of the European different organization union, and the uh, Europeans said, "Look, you're not allowed yeah. here because you're Muslims." Yeah. Yeah. As simple as that. But we need you. As a NATO, we need you as a NATO because your your proximity to Russia and the Arab world. So we need you. So the Turks say yes. Okay, we we are willing slaves to be your slaves. No problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I heard once, you know, that there was a a possible plan. That's possible, but I don't think that it's likely that um, if the Zionist military. The Imperialist Death Force, IDF, Imperialist Death Force, is, is what they should be called. Yes, yeah. exactly. If they uh, do uh, carry out a land invasion into Lebanon, then uh, Turkey was supposedly willing to uh, send its soldiers Who? Turkey? to no. uh, Lebanon to uh, to fight them off, you know, together with Hezbollah. I, know, but... I, I would be worried if they send them to fight along the Zionist forces. Not... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nobody trusts them. It's so talk. so real, yeah. It's yeah. it's only talk. Uh, when the the Zionist um, the imperialist defense forces or the death forces uh, enter Lebanon, this is not a game. It's if they cannot uh, win the land invasion in Gaza, which is very small uh, piece of land, which is flat. Okay, they can't uh, uh, 
call it, you know, call it a, a win. How the hell they could go invade Lebanon, which is about 10,000 square kilometers, with hills and ravines and forests and mountains and you name it, with with a force of over 100,000, uh, you know, freedom fighters of Hezbollah, mm-hmm. uh, who has uh, are equipped with uh, the, the latest know-how of uh, military hardware in a small groups in Lebanon. I think it's a, it's a it's a death trap for the Zionists and they they're emboldened the Zionists are so stupid they're emboldened by their latest uh, victories in Lebanon killing and murdering hundreds of innocent people in order to get to the you know the leadership of of uh, Hezbollah and um, yeah, we were looking forward to that, uh, you know, land invasion. Let them mm-hmm. let, let them try, let them yeah. try to go into Lebanon. I don't. I think they will be. They will be. They will have really hard time moving first few meters into Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. No. I, I, I don't that. think yeah, I am not critical. pessimistic. I am optimistic at this point. Mm-hmm. Hezbollah is is a is a vast, multifaceted faceted, uh, organization. It's entrenched entrenched into the population. It's part of the population. It's the people. Hezbollah is the people. So uh, uh, you know the Zionists. They think they could um, you know uh, go into Lebanon and do whatever they want, and they haven't learned. In 1982, they were they were beaten by uh, the resistance. In 19 in 2000, they've been kicked out of Lebanon. In 2006, they tried to come back. They've been beaten. So now they're trying again. Let it be. I'm uh, more uh, concerned about <clears throat> the offensive in the in the West Bank, where they're seemingly trying to uh, carry out. Uh, and steps uh, a new Nakba because they're treating the West Bank now as if it were Gaza and they want to take out the resistance and then make life so unbearable that Palestinians will leave somewhere. But nowhere is there any welcome for Palestinians, you know, certainly not in Jordan and certainly not well, in Egypt. So mm-hmm. uh, I can I see a very sort of, you know, bloody struggle coming up uh, in the West Bank. Well, uh, it, it is dangerous. It's a dangerous situation. We are having a, a fascist Nazi style government, yeah. whose uh, objective is to uh, ethnic cleanse the Palestinians all from Palestine, from all Palestine. But all that is uh, uh, depends on the outcome fight in Lebanon. Basically, mm-hmm. if they can defeat Hezbollah. And move all the way forward to let's say the Litani River, as they say. I think next will be the ethnic cleansing of in full or part the West Bank, and same thing in full or part of the Palestinian Gaza, and also in full or part Palestinians living inside so called Israel as Israeli citizens. So, so it's uh. It's a it's a major it's a major uh, battle between the resistance forces and the imperialist forces. Uh, so uh, we are we are actually witnessing uh, the the beginning of the end of does uh, to me I, I would say the Zionist entity. They will be defeated in Lebanon when they are being defeated in Lebanon. They are not gonna do much in regards to the Palestinians in West Bank and Gaza um, or the Palestinians inside so-called Israel power. So this is a very, very uh, important uh, historical uh, moment or junction. So it's, it's to be or not to be. That's how I see it because the Zionists are not going to back off. They will not get a agree to any 
political deal with uh, the Palestinians uh, in Gaza. And Hezbollah made it clear uh, before and even now that there will now be ceasefire or no cease of fighting until there is a ceasefire deal agreed by the Palestinians in Gaza. So it's a... Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, that's crucial. Yeah, Yeah, there's some sort of initiative I've noticed uh, to try to uh, arrange a ceasefire just for Lebanon, but not for Gaza. Yeah, no, but that's not going to work. No, 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 no. it's gone beyond uh, that. Yeah, uh, uh, martyr uh, Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah, he said in his last uh, speech about a week ago, he said, basically, in the nutshell, hell comes or high water, there will be no ceasefire until you, the Zionists, uh, reach a deal with the Palestinians on ceasefire uh, in Gaza. So basically, Hezbollah will continue that path, they're not going to back up. The minute they back up, that means uh, admitting defeat. Okay. And Hezbollah will not, as a freedom fighter group, will not, you know, admitting uh, a defeat. Uh, you know, it's got to fight for the rest, you know. It's, yeah. not, it's not an it's, option to stop yeah. fighting the Zionist uh, colonist uh, invasion, invading uh, army. Yeah, the Zionist regime is not giving any option to his, to Hamas. They're asking Hamas to declare, you know, itself to be surrendering. They want Hamas to surrender itself. <laughs> yeah, no, but... so uh, uh, so there's no way there will be that, there uh, will be no nothing in history, whether uh, recent history or through you know. A long history of humankind, any resistance uh, uh, capitulated or give up or gave up uh, the fight or uh, declare uh, surrender. Never. Yeah. So I mean, the Palestinian people wouldn't let Hamas <laughs> declare no, itself. You know, it doesn't no. work. It doesn't work. Uh, it it work. doesn't work. Yeah. So yeah. the Zionists think by by terrorism, by using terror. Okay, which been supported and abated by United States and Europe, they can reach some political arrangement uh, with uh, the freedom fighters. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. They're dreaming. They're dreaming in technicolor. Have you noticed that the <clears throat> Jewish Israeli public has gone crazy? You know, there's they're increasing practice. their support for uh, yep. Netanyahu because he had some military successes in Lebanon. So they think that, you know, God is on his side, you know, and that they're going to support him, you know, because yep. he's winning. Yeah, that, that's All they care that's about bad. is winning. They've been entrained, indoctrinated, you know, to think about winning. That's it. That's all. That's all they care winning about. Winning and blood. Blood is, for them, is a win. It's yeah. like, doesn't matter how many children... Uh, innocent people being murdered by the air force or uh, you know uh, soldiers is not important as long as they see blood they think they're winning this yeah. is how the fascist mind works okay yeah. more blood on the other side that means we are winning mm-hmm. and that's the sickness of this uh, society called the israeli people who are nothing mm-hmm. but a bunch of colonists uh war mongers uh, yeah. Suck paths, and uh, that's bring me back to a few months back when I said, I don't, I don't, I don't bet on the so called Israeli uh, demonstrators uh, to uh, to change the war. Mm-hmm. These people, they just want the hostages back and then continue the war. So, uh, yeah. This is this is the colonial uh, entity which we we called as a, as a, the cancer gland in the Middle East, as uh, martyr Hassan Nasrallah said. It's a mm-hmm. cancerous gland in mm-hmm. the middle of the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Yes, there there is a, a revolutionary wing to the protest movement called Standing Together. They contacted me even, but. Uh, they're not going to uh, withstand the uh, popular support for Netanyahu, which is uh, just incredible, you know, incredibly stupid of these Jewish Israelis. How could they let themselves be turned into such idiots? You know, I can't believe it. And yet that's what's happened. 
And no, they're going to have to uh, learn. But, but they're going to have to know, learn by other means. That's it. That's all. Yeah. If you know, if you know how the upbringing of the Zionists in in the Zionist state, which is actually testimony by lots of Zion, ex-Zionist turned anti-Zionist uh, Israelis who are very very little and and very few, said since we were five years old, we've been been indoctrinated into uh, this cult called Zionism. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, yeah. it's death, killing, mayhem, super, supremacy, you name it. So uh, we're talking about seven and a half million Netanyahu's in, in, the, in occupied Palestine, literally. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's few, like I wouldn't say there's even percentage. There few are anti-Zionist uh, who are living in Palestine. Who is, one of them is, I would say, uh, Gideon Levy, who is disguised as an anti-Zionist, he's not. He will not come out say he's anti-Zionist because they will, uh, you know, kill crucify him. him. <laughs> they will but kill he him. Is yeah. Nevertheless, but yeah. he he exposed he exposed them yeah. literally, literally clearly that we having a very sick, sick and ill uh, society within in in occupied Palestine called the Israeli people. Mm -hmm. Very sad, yeah. but it's the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my! Yes, but <clears throat> you know the Zionist uh, state itself, and Netanyahu in particular. You know, seeing that they're getting increased popularity and support for oh. doing fascistic, successful fascistic actions. Exactly. That's and they that's, they will want to continue. They will the want to invade Lebanon. They yeah. want a victory in Lebanon. And they yeah. think that this will make up for the for the stalemate that they've stepped into in in Gaza. Uh, you know, never-ending struggle that they will never win. Okay, so they think they can win in Lebanon. Oh, yes? Okay, let them try. We'll see. This they, is a turning they, point, a very yes. big turning point, as you Absolutely. mentioned, you know, in the Western Orient or Middle East, you know. This is, you know, uh, determining, you know, how the outcome of everything is going to take place with the defeat of the Zionist regime in Lebanon. And I can see the revolutionary struggle being ignited in many of the uh, Arab countries. Absolutely. We'll say, okay, this is the time to get rid of them. And Absolutely, especially, especially is, in know, Egypt sentiment. and Jordan. Yes, Egypt and yes. Jordan are are the prime suspects or the prime uh, states that the people will eventually uh, revolt against uh, those uh, treasonous regimes uh, surrounding Palestine, who are aiding and abating the Zionist uh, genocide in Palestine. I believe that I am actually looking forward, you know, under the circumstances, of course, uh, seeing the Zionists invading Lebanon, because there's no other option. The absolute is no option. Mm -hmm. So let them come. That's what uh, Hezbollah is looking forward. Mm -hmm. Probably Hezbollah is not uh, uh, hitting hard as should the Zionist state until they start their invasion or so-called invasion into Lebanon, then I believe hell will break loose on to, on the Zionist uh, on the Zionists in Palestine and those who are invading Lebanon. I have one hundred percent confidence that the Lebanese fighters will uh, inflict heavy losses on the Zionist invading lebanon they did it before and i don't see why they can't do it again they will the uh, the uh, the major factor which is advantageous to the zionist regime is its uh, superior air power it's got yep. control of the sky you know it's bombing everything that it can you know yep. when it can't win it'll destroy everything yep. so uh they did that in gaza yeah they so have how to cope anything. with this air power is the question, you know, I would like to see that, you know, the uh, um, Yemeni and Iranian and uh, uh, Lebanese forces would be able to successfully target the military airports so that the F-35s couldn't take off or couldn't I think that's land. What that, I think that's in the, in the, in the, in the books or in the works. That's the crucial, you know, yes. factor that I has to be sort of taken care of immediately. Martyr Hassan Nasrallah said uh, in one of his speeches that if an all-out war with the Zionists, 
those airplanes, uh, they might have no basis to return to. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's it's uh, in the planning uh, books of Hezbollah and other uh, allies to hit mm -hmm. hard those uh, Zionist bases or uh, air, you know uh, jet fighters uh, bases uh, and take them out of commission. So um, where are they gonna go? Well, there's, there's talk about those uh, planes that might land back in Jordan or in Cyprus. But would Jordan allow that uh, their bases be targeted? I don't know. Uh, would Ty Cyprus allow that to happen? Because it's just only 200 kilometers away from Lebanon. As you mentioned previously, there is a six U.S. military bases in Jordan? There's 16. Oh. <laughs> 16. There's three of them British. So uh, uh -huh. I think I think one or two French and the rest are Americans. So that is uh -huh. NATO. So uh -huh. not all of them are uh, air bases. I think there's uh, about five or six air bases in Jordan. Uh -huh. So uh, basically, they will be targeted, I believe, because if uh, the attacking plane planes or jet fighters, the Israelis. Uh, you know, leaving or uh, returning to those bases, those bases will be a legitimate target mm -hmm. by the Iranians, um, the Syrians, the Lebanese. So I'm not undermining, uh, underestimating the 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 uh, Zionist alliance with the Americans and the Arab Asian regimes. Yet I am not also uh, underestimating the will of the resistance forces in uh, the Levant who will fight and fight hard. And I, I am very optimistic that we will triumph. I, I see that as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. That helps, helps me overcome my pessimism. No, no. I, I mean, so many people, they, they felt sad and optimistic, uh, pessimistic and down after the, the 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 vast mass murder by the Zionists when they uh, you know exploded the pagers and the walkie talkies, then attacking uh, you know a Radwan force uh, you know brass, uh, then murdering other leaders uh, all the way to murdering Hassan Nasrallah. Yes, there's uh, there's uh, something uh, happened, but that doesn't mean that this is it. Hezbollah is not is not a gang, is not a mafia. You, you kill its leaders and it's, it's finished. Mm -hmm. You know this is how the how stupid the Zionists are. You know they think that if you kill the leadership, you know it's over. It doesn't work this way. Mm -hmm. You know what they. Like they did, they did that to Hamas. Uh, almost tw well, actually twenty years to the year, two thousand and four, they killed Ahmed Yassin. Oh yes. Then they had another leader, Abdul Aziz Rantisi, who was anointed as uh, the the leader. They killed him one week later. Hmm. Then for the past twenty years, they killed so many of its military and. Uh, and political leadership, this is where, where Hamas is, still uh, vibrant, mm -hmm. fighting, you know, and uh, making mm -hmm. uh, major uh, strategic uh, defeats to the Zionist entity. So uh, same goes for Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a people's uh, resistance uh, movement. It's not a mafia. It's not a gang. It's not uh, what the Zionist and their you know imperialist leadership think that Hezbollah is if you take the leadership it's gone. It's actually the other way around. It's when you lose when you lose a a, a, a a diplomatic and pragmatic leader like Hassan Nasrallah, you'll bring in another who is more militant, mm -hmm. who is more steadfasting, is more uh, vibrant. So uh, this. Um, there's always, always people who will step into the void and fill that void and move forward. This yeah. is a historical movement. There's no returning back. The fight will continue. We'll move on until the last 
day of liberating Jerusalem. We will triumph. I have no doubt in my mind that we will. Mm -hmm. That's a very good way to conclude. I think that uh, you're going to be busy this afternoon with a demonstration as well yes, that you're participating sir. in. Yep. So uh, we will conclude today and uh, we expect uh, major developments uh, over this week, coming week and uh, we will continue to discuss this uh, at the next time that we meet. Thank you very much for your... You're welcome. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Yes. And struggle.